Okay, welcome to lecture four. Uh, what we've done so far, let's recap in the first series of lectures, I'll just call that lecture one. We got intuition about how do we model, how do we explain a dependent variable using lines. So we explained the, the uh, price of a car with uh, horsepower and then we built in another variable called a dummy variable for is the car domestic or an import. And then in the second lecture we modeled a relationship using curves and we used natural logs and we used polynomials to model relationships. And we did that first to make sure you really get a feeling for what we're doing when it comes to modeling relationships and how to interpret these relationships. I think that was the first, most important thing. And then in lecture three we went through some calculations about well how do we find the best relationship and what do we mean by best relationship. And so we talked about residuals, minimizing the sum of the squared residuals to give us the line that is the best fit called ordinary least squares method for describing relationships. And we talked about R squared and adjusted R squared and residual sum of squares, estimated sum of squares, and total sum of squares. But you still might be wondering, okay, now that I understand the basic idea, how do I actually do this? How do we actually model relationships? And so that's what we're going to work on today is suppose you wanted to explain something that's the whole point how would I even get started and so that's what we're going to focus on today the basics so I'm going to follow a few other authors today as I mentioned in the preliminary lecture that I'm going to sort of be following along with Studenman's textbook called Using Econometrics, and mine is edition uh, 5, the 5th edition. And in chapter 3, after covering some of these preliminaries, he starts talking about how do you actually do this. Now at the end of chapter 2 he actually lists, in my version on page 49, I recommend you get the book. It's, it's a good book to follow along with. But on uh, page 49, he says, okay, suppose I'm looking at someone else's work where they're explaining something. How do I tell if they've done a good job? And he lists these eight questions, and you could probably come up with, if you ask you know, 100 economists, you will get 100 different answers as to what you should check. But here are some basic questions to ask yourself as you read along in a study and you're looking at someone else's work. And let's go through these and I'll comment and give my impression. The first question Studenman says you should ask is, ask yourself, this equation that he, that the author is trying to use to explain something, whatever it is, does this, is does this equation make sense? Now one way to, to ask that question is, is the equation supported by sound theory? Now what do you mean by theory? Well it depends on what you're explaining. If you're trying to explain uh, how many people per 10,000 have a certain kind of cancer in different towns or different counties, then the variables you include to explain the cancer rate should be supported by some kind of theory epidemiology or medical theories. So if we're trying to explain the price of a car, well, are you including the variables that should be there, the variables that make sense that uh, should be in the equation? And is there some theory that says whether this relationship should be a line or whether it should be a curve? Sometimes there are theories that, that tell you it should not be a straight line or that it should be a straight line. So ask yourself, is the equation being estimated, uh, is it supported by either some kind of logical 
foundation or some kind of theory. Secondly, ask yourself how well does the estimated regression as a whole fit the data? One way to measure how well the regression fits the data is R squared. Remember the R squared tells us what percentage of the variation in the dependent variable can be explained with this model. And so a high R squared might be better than a low R squared. All else equal. Ceteris paribus. All else equal, high R squareds are better. But none of these questions should alone determine whether something is a, is a good paper or not. All of these things should be simultaneously determined. So if you have an equation that's supported by sound theory, even if your regression, your, your equation doesn't have a high R squared, okay, well, maybe in some cases you don't have a high R squared just because what you're trying to explain is hard to explain. Think about the weather. If you looked at the R squared between what a weatherman predicts the temperature is going to be in three days and the actual temperature three days from now, your R squared is going to be low. doesn't mean there's anything bad about what you're doing looking at that relationship. It just means that it's hard to explain temperature in the future with weather models today. Now third, uh, is the data set reasonably large and accurate? So where did this data come from? Do we trust that the numbers are correct? And how many observations do you have? Do you just have three or four observations? Or do you have hundreds or thousands? A larger data set, again, all else equal, is uh, going to be give us more confidence in the results. Number four, is ordinary least squares the best estimator to be used for this equation? Sometimes minimizing the sum of the squared residuals is the best method and sometimes it is not. And we're going to look at that in the next series of lectures, uh, which I'll call lecture five. Sometimes OLS is good, sometimes you should not use it. There are other methods you can use. So we'll get into those details, but that's a question to ask yourself in the future. Uh, next, how well do the estimated coefficients correspond to the expectations developed by the researcher before the data were collected. For example, if you think that horsepower should, should cause the price of a car to increase, if you run a regression and you find that horsepower decreases the price of a car, then maybe that indicates a problem, right? Your results should make sense. At least most of your results should make sense. Uh, if your results don't make sense, there's a problem somewhere. Number six, are all the obviously important variables included in the equation? Number six is one of the most important. Now all of these are important considerations, but number six, as we will see later on in the course, is extremely important because what we'll learn later is if you leave out an important variable that should explain what you're trying to explain, like if you leave out an explanatory variable that should explain the dependent variable, in many cases, in fact in most cases, it's going to make uh, all of your results suspect. So you don't want to leave out an important variable. Number seven, has the most theoretically logical functional form been used? Again, this is, this is getting back a little bit to this idea number one that I was mentioning before. Should it be a straight line? Should it be a curve? Should it be a parabola? Um, is there some reason to, to know? Sometimes you just don't know. And so you have to go with your gut and also check. Look at your data and I'll show you ways to do that. And number eight, does the regression appear to be free of major econometric problems? And again, this is a topic that we will look at later in the course. A lot of these problems have to do with the residuals. Uh, are the residuals normally distributed or not? And again, we're going to get into those details a little bit more in Lecture 5, where we will look at some problems such as heteroscedasticity, multicollinearity, and some other big, hard to pronounce words that we'll talk about later. Now, my 10 minutes are almost up, but we're going to have a, in this next section of this lecture, 
we're going to look at the steps that someone should go through in order to carry out a project where they collect data and document their results and then we're going to look at an example real-life research study and comment on what they've done.